Uh, but if you look at the fundamentals, essentially we are saying there shouldn't be a problem. So I think really that what we are seeing when it comes to the oil price is a bubble. And that bubble probably is going to burst. How much lower it will go, I don't know. But I don't think it will, be, uh, it will continue growing as we have seen uh, in the past. So the fact that oil companies are struggling to even replenish the oil that they have used, now, those things are all adding up. So it may be a bit too quick to say that this is a bubble, wouldn't it? Well, uh, because of the uh, items that I mentioned before, and because of this analysis that uh, we published, uh, we presented last year at the SP in Anaheim in November of 2007, and that really is part of research that was done at the Colorado School of Mines by Roberto Aguilera uh, Jr. What he developed was this very interesting curve where we have a global cumulative long-run supply curve for conventional oil and for NGL. And the graph is very powerful, it's based on real data. What we have in here is the average total production cost per barrel yep. in 2006 US dollars. Cross plotted against the oil and natural gas liquids future volumes. So you notice that in here we go all the way to let's say about 1.8 trillion barrels or something like that. And when you look at the cost of producing that oil you see that those costs are lower than the prices, significantly lower. So the way we look at reserves, the way we're analyzing reserves, is not by considering that reserves are a fixed stock. Rather, reserves are a variable stock that is being used as it is required. It's very similar to uh, any other business. You have a stock, you have your inventory, depending on the needs that you see that are going to arise. And um, based on this graph, what we are saying is there is plenty of oil at reasonable costs that is going to be produced as needed. There is plenty of reserves, resources in the core of the planet. We go deep enough, we go far enough, there's oil. There's always a question of cost. So we have a lot of oil in the ground, but then the, the issue now becomes cost. Can people afford $300 oil? Well, I think that, that what you are touching then is in the fundamentals yeah. of supply and demand, uh, which I think in the long run is going to uh, dominate. I think you put it very well. When you say if it goes to 300, then people are going to start saying, well, I'm going to do something else to save on, on, on gasoline and so on. And uh, that's going then to help to bring the cost down. But the critical point of the graph that I'm showing you is two things. One, the resources are there. And in this graph is only for oil and NGL, but in the same way there are graphs for many other things that we're preparing this research uh, at the Colorado School of Mines. So there are for gas, there is for unconventional oil, and in all of these cases the cost of producing one barrel or one medium BTU or whatever are smaller than the current prices. So because of that we are very optimistic that the future is brilliant. I, I don't see the doom, gloom and doom that is uh, forecasted by many people because of these resources at low costs. Uh, I, I, yeah, I understand your point, but once again, if, if you put in there then the, the, the availability of the resources, all these problems that we're talking about, the weak oil, the political problems, sometimes mother nature that give us uh, 
uh, hurricanes and things like that. So we are not saying that there cannot be uh, temporary setbacks. And we explain that in our publication. There could be temporary setbacks. And those temporary setbacks have also occurred in the past. Throughout several decades, once in a while you have these setbacks. I don't think they really give a lot of credit to the ultimate resource, you know, to the person, the creativity of the human being. Let me tell you a, a brief story. Uh, before coming to the university, uh, once in a while I was a little bit concerned about these things. Coming to the university has been an eye opener for me. And the reason it has been an eye opener is because by being in contact with these young people, I see that they are eager, they want to learn, and now I like to say that we are in good hands. I was not sure about that before. Now my direct communication with these students at this university and other universities is telling me clearly, you know, we are in good hands. These people are very creative. They will find the means, they will conduct the research, find the technology, be innovative, and find the means to get all of these uh, resources that I'm showing in here, economically. Okay. We normally associate Alberta with oil sands. Yes. So tell us about gas sands and then uh, about the technologies uh, you and your colleagues are developing. Okay. Uh, uh, this, this chair that, I'm, uh, that I have right now, ConocoPhillips and CERC IRI chair, was created with the idea of finding means of economically producing significant volumes of gas that right now are trapped in these sands with very low permeability. When I say very low permeability, you cannot produce this, thing, this gas unless you go and do hydraulic fracturing jobs and so on. So in the research that we are doing, what we have done is we have created a multidisciplinary research team and we have created a program that we call G Free. So how do you spell it? This is G F R E E. Okay. okay. So the first G, the G stands then for geoscience. So the cornerstone of this program that we have developed, this research program, is geoscience, is understanding the rocks. If we are able to understand these rocks, then we feel very confident that we'll be succeeding in our, in our goal of producing gas economically. The F stands for formation evaluation, which includes things like well testing and petrophysics. Again, has to do with properly understanding the reservoir. The R stands for reservoir drilling, completion, stimulation. We have to stimulate these formations in order to produce this economically. What you're saying is that the, the gas is trapped inside the rocks. That's what you're trying to get out. That's right, in these very low permeability formations. And then we, we, we have the other things that are reservoir engineering, and we have the economics and the externalities, which include social issues and environmental issues. So we want to do this responsibly. Okay, understand. So there's a total approach to, to dealing with this. Yes, it is. Now, is gas sands uh, a big thing in Alberta at the moment? Or are you trying to make it the next big thing for Alberta? It's going to be big in Alberta. And, uh, not, it is not at the moment. Well, it is in the sense that out of the total gas, that is being produced in Alberta, we are estimating that about 25% of that gas is coming from these very low permeability formations, tight gas sands. And we estimate that by the year 2025, approximately 40% of the gas that is produced in Alberta and in Canada is going to be coming from these type of formations.